No, I, I think if anything, my final thoughts are um, I am not informed on Ashes of Creation. This is not a creator I was familiar with. Um, and so whatever is said in this video is my raw reaction because we are making sure that one of us has seen the video, but the other one has not. So enjoy that for what it is, and we'll see you next time. What's going on, Workforce? Brian and Chris here. And today, Chris, I wanted to show you a video. It's about Ashes of Creation. And in and of itself, when we talk about Ashes and we talk about it solving all the world's problems, I, for okay. one, am excited about the release of the game eventually. However, as somebody who's been following the game this entire time, there, there is this appearance of obviously massive uh, fear of missing out and cash shop items. So when people talk about how Ashes will also solve the MMO monetization problem, I'm like, they have been selling this game and items within this game this entire time and the game isn't even out yet so like the part of me the cynic the cynic in me is like all right like i'll like i'm i'm rooting for it but then at the right. same time within the community itself uh it's there's all like there's this even sub cycle of people even getting frustrated because they're gonna have to wait a couple more years before this game's actually like ready to ship right and it's right. being no it's gonna run on by the time it releases it's gonna have to run on unreal 9 <laughs> Um, that's where all of my concern comes from. Yeah. I hope it's fun. Yeah. I hope it's good. Yeah. The fact that they have already asked for money, that people are already forming loyal tribal based stuff based on tech demos. Like we're so far from release. It's, it's the MMO. Uh, the, there's a belief system that MMO players I ha like have. It's almost in a way like you are always looking forward to the next big thing. And so the, it gets announced and then people put their hope in it and there's going to be a cycle there because no matter what it will be hype but then you'll always see some kind of dip and then essentially kind of either pulls itself out of that dip or you know or doesn't one of the two but okay. um this is a video that i thought was really interesting i really enjoyed it it's uh called ashes of creation sabotaging their own reputation with fomo cosmetics and i thought i'd kind of walk you through it i've seen the video you haven't this is okay. kind of our reaction and discussion uh for it for those of you who are watching uh, I don't even know where the camera is. I was like, keep looking up, thinking the camera's up. Yeah, there. I never recorded with anybody else in here. So I'm like, as evident right. by the fact that the wall can't figure out what's going on. Yeah. So uh, we're going to dive into this video. Link will be in the description of it. You can also, uh, if you guys, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button and uh, subscribe for more. We're going to do some more of these in person reactions. But let's go ahead and uh, and jump into it. What the hell are these analytics? The channel's plummeting. Is the boss losing his touch or what? I think you're going to like this Sir, opening. Sir, I just got word that uh, the boss is covering another controversial subject. He's, he's, he's talking about Ashes of Creation and he's talking about the, the FOMO stuff and all the stores. All right, well, first of all, remind yourself whose office you're in before you start barging in, screaming your mouth off. Uh, sorry, sir. I didn't mean nothing by it. I just thought it was important information, but I respect your authority and I respect the mighty Al Gore. I like how also with our even uh, bad green screen, you can kind of see it happening in there. Like I've also looked at my like videos. I'm like, oh man, I didn't get the lighting right on that one. I watched a bunch of tutorials. Simply put, there's supposed to be more space between the camera and here. I can't buy that. Yeah. I live in an old house. <laughs> this is a wall. I moved to paint to give me the extra inches of the greens rather than like, yeah, have a, like a <laughs> pulled out anyway. And secondly, I'd like to remind you that the boss has kept us going for nearly 18 months with no squabbles, no help, no nothing. How dare you walk into my office and tell me, of all people, the boss is covering a controversial subject again. <laughs> I'd like to remind you, last time the boss did that, he absolutely wiped the floor with the lot. You're right, sir. I there's nothing to worry about then. Controversial subject. You wouldn't know a controversial subject if it slapped you in the face, mate. Oh, <laughs> Am I right, guys? Oh, There's this. nobody in here. <laughs> well, it was fine last time, right? Yeah, but just to be sure, I'll go grab the shotgun. Hey, what up, boys? So, it's been a while since we farmed a controversial topic for shameless views. Uh, 20 <laughs> odd days, in fact, and my need to trigger as many nerds as possible has reached critical levels. This time I thought it would be rather interesting to turn on my own community as lately the channel has been taking the stance of 
bringing up some interesting topics in relation to the core designs of Ashes of Creation in the modern era. And I think we'll be continuing this trend for the foreseeable future as the discussion it brings is exactly what I'm looking for. So come join the Discord, my friends. Uh, the distraction in there lately has been so prominent that I can use it to upload less videos and then just blame it on somebody else. Ah, <sighs> guilt-free procrastination. So, grab yourself a Cooper Cola because FOMO is an insidious practice in the MMO genre, and Ashes of Creation is no virgin to such practices. One of the biggest criticisms for this potential scam is the sheer amount of FOMO cosmetics they push onto us, offering cosmetic after cosmetic, shoving it down our throats with the promise of the perfect MMO. I don't think Ashes has promised the perfect MMO. I believe the community has cursed it with that title. Uh, and I think I look at that as a curse first and foremost when it comes down to any of this. It, it is a weird thing in which that when you go look at every MMO, like it become like any MMO that gets the be the title of the next big MMO, like it it helps it initially, but it almost in a way acts as a curse because there's no, like outside of like Fortnite or like maybe two other games, what World of Warcraft, there's been no game that really comes out and then continues to to, to release and to grow with such rapid numbers, it comes out and then it nat naturally hits a dip. And then right. that dip becomes the narrative. Oh my gosh. Dead how, game. Dead how, game. Yeah, how, Dead how, did game. This, how did this game not maintain those, right. those same levels day after day? How come people didn't quit their jobs, leave their, their families and just play this one game for the rest of their life. And so uh, anyway, that's just the me. counterpoint would be that, no Man's Sky was blamed for not correcting when this narrative was given to them. Okay, yeah. Final Fantasy was blamed for not correcting when we started to assume male Vieira would be there with female Vieira, <laughs> so right? So true. And so when something yeah. is put out there, while they may not have put it out there, what is their job as far as correction? And the bigger the company, the bigger the publisher, not the dev team. Yeah. The bigger the publisher, the more we are going to blame the dev team, not the publisher, yeah. for not getting out in front of them. I think they are also one and the same because the CEO has come out and said that their launch will have... No oh, issues. he said they would have a smooth launch. And like you look at, you look at games with enormous backing on yeah. both the dev and publisher side with with years and years of in-house practice and a team full of people that have decades of experience doing this. And Ashes is like, as far as I can tell, first one's going to be amazing. Yeah. It's like, I, maybe, I mean, maybe they just haven't played games on day one. So maybe they're like, oh, every game's good on day one. So we will be too. But like, as somebody that plays a lot of day one games, I would say, set my expectations low, deliver on that, and we're good. Yeah. But he's like, no, 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 no. no. We're going to be perfect. It's gonna be a, and it's I'd gonna like to discuss right. this with you all today. Now, with all that bollocks out of the way, let's begin. Now, normally I would encourage you all to like or dislike this video, depending on your personal opinions on the matter. However, because YouTube removed the ability to publicly see dislikes, surely to protect small creators, like they said, and not protect giant corporate entities like... Blizzard's latest WoW expansion. I actually don't mind the dislike thing. When I am on our interface, it's still very easy to see. Mm -hmm. The ratio is still right there. Yeah. Um, and actually, now I feel I, I would I would hide the likes too. I would just hide them both. You can as an option, but it's like and and publicly, and yeah. so that internally, I know that everybody who hit like and hit dislike did it as a choice. Mm -hmm. And as somebody that always forgets to tell people to hit like and subscribe, I know that they went out of their way because I didn't remind <laughs> I, them. I didn't tell them. And so, either. like, that's a real metric that tells me, hey, I watched this. I watched most of your videos. This wasn't my favorite. This one was. And it's less than a comment. They can click it. They can leave it. And so that's what I use it as. So I don't view it as some, like, because as far as I can tell, they still get the publicity. They still get the algorithmic boost. Mm -hmm. They still get any ad revenue they're entitled to. So people are like, ah, now Blizzard has to live with thumbs down. I don't Ooh. know if they care. No, they don't. I think the well, little guy cares. The little guy cares. <laughs> the, uh, the But the big company doesn't actually care. In fact, from a marketing perspective, engagement's engagement. Yeah, like, yeah they're going to add those numbers together. What's 47 plus 39? Oh, yeah. That's way better. Way better than, you know, than, yeah. And so 
that, that that's the there's a myth like that's what usually within the gamer like oh i showed them you know it's like all right uh though like I've, I've heard the argument especially as it relates to like oh is this guide worthwhile yes and that essentially is something that's that's hurt like us in the past where it's like people won't actually watch our guide because we'll get people within a certain game community that doesn't like a like a take or a view that we have and they'll go out of their way to go and dislike and we can see that like i had uh, i recently released my red mage uh controller guide and apparently the algorithm the algorithm decided to pick that one up over any other guide and and I went and looked and I was like it's the most ratio disliked uh, guide that I have for for controller for a job without them showing it without so them showing it, I still see it but it's like yeah it's like I, and I, and I usually when I see that because when the algorithm doesn't pick it up usually my ratio ends up being like 100% or 99% overall but whenever it goes to the wider like you know 14 community who is like oh i don't like brian for whatever like you know everybody has their reasons um oh i'm gonna go and dislike that and so i was like oh the algorithm it picked it up and it, it dropped by like 20 percent in the like to dislike ratio and so it's like all right like does it affect me no but does it actually affect somebody who might come in and watch that video yeah so having people who like you can go get a plug in that shows it but having it like not seen actually i think has had a, a positive impact on the content that i make because I usually focus in on educational content, which generally isn't algorithmically driven. It's usually search driven, and that's what all my analytics. Uh, yeah, the only thing me. I use likes for now is when I post like three or four of the same type of video, and I'm trying to like subset that. What within oh, yeah. those did well, and what within those did not. Yeah. That ratio helps drive that. I would instead still encourage you to do that, but also please leave a comment explaining how you feel about the whole situation so Intrepid can garner some wider feedback from players who are not in the echo chamber and completely overdosing on this MMO's copium. I love the feel. You, you do still watch my videos, I'm right? Changing that, like when you chop down a tree, <laughs> it actually falls down. Brand like Chris, I really yeah. that. Yeah, the, you like that with New World. Um you get really immersed in that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh my gosh, I actually chopped the tree down. And the um, the WoW player in me that wants to have an optimized mining route goes, okay, but is it gonna respawn on the same route? And the moment it was, I was like, oh, yeah. then it's just an animation. Yeah, and so like, it, it was it was icing for me. Animation and a cooldown. I was like, <laughs> okay. I still like that. I, like when I went and then we chopped down a tree and farm trees, like in 14, I was like, just hitting a node and nothing changes. It's just like, get the item. Yeah. Am I? So it's no secret that Ashes of Creation pushes their FOMO cosmetics every single stream, and I will be trying my best to take a neutral stance on this subject throughout the video, despite my ultra bias against these bastard cosmetic packs. This crocodile mount here, for example, is not actually a, a mount at all. It'll be mobs that populate a swamp or mushroom biome. Same goes for everything else shown. The wolf mount shown here looks like they will fit very nicely as ambient hostile wolf mobs populating a dark and dank forest. You've talked about this numerous times, especially yeah. when playing Final Fantasy XIV, you're like, why can't I ride that? Why is that not a mount? And in terms of this design philosophy, if they're designing mobs that also can be mounts, that adds a lot of variety. And the fact mm -hmm. that like what, what we're looking at here though is a truly both like the the company's funding it, but it's a it is a crowd funded game. And they're funding it based off of like help us build this thing, but they're selling it to you that you actually get it in the game itself. And it's an interesting and yet potential like I look at it kind of as a potential counter pay, uh, powder keg, keg of powder, whatever, uh, of that could go off essentially where you've seen like if it if this game never comes out, if it eventually like we've run out of money and we have to shut down, etc. Like that is essentially like how much how then it's the scam. It's the you know, that's the the anger, the, the resolve or you know, the game comes out and it isn't everything that you hoped it would be writing that out doesn't feel unique or interesting. And then essentially, I think it just my concern is, is that fast forward two years, three years from now, and it's like just the amount of frustration from people who've put in right. money every month or every other, you know, like, right. like, hey, I've, I've spent thousands of dollars on your game already, and it wasn't what I wanted. I, I tend to be very concerned with the method to which we have seen Ashes be developed because it's, it's built the tribalism first and the gameplay second. 
And so I've always been very like, let's give me a good game that's fun. Get, and then if mm-hmm. people want to defend that, I understand that. As opposed to let's build the defense. Yeah. And then that way we don't have to have proper critics. And the moment anybody doesn't like the game, well, they're just haters. And so like it feels very much like like self-deprecating humor, right? Like if you make fun of yourself, nobody else is allowed to. And like that, <laughs> that excuse, like it, it doesn't hold that much water. I mean, I'm guilty of it as much as the next person, but like... I, I don't want to see it on behalf of a corporate entity where this is an organized marketing strategy. Yeah. As far as leveraging cosmetics, that's actually one of the few areas I would jump in here to defend Ashes. Cosmetics are designed to be developed profitably. Mm-hmm. I don't want somebody saying, hey, it's going to cost $10,000 to develop this cosmetic internally and have it rigged and, and push through testing and all that. Let's raise exactly $10,000 to do it. So ideally, you are leveraging assets and those are coming in both ways. And so ideally, it is a, a bit of a reskin. Ideally, it is in my mind because mm-hmm. ideally it's, hey, it's it's closer to like the t-shirt you get for walking in a 5K. It's closer to the t-shirt, you know, like it's, you're like, oh, you paid $50 to be part of this 5K to raise money for cancer or whatever. And then they gave you a t-shirt. Right. The t-shirt wasn't $50. So, like, that's how I view cosmetics, um, is they should be an additional way to say, hey, if you want to support the game additionally, we'll give right. you a little something. Obviously, that thing didn't cost us what you're paying. And we're going to use that to reflect into the game, which is where it does become frustrating when you get into larger publishers when that money then doesn't go back into the game. And that's right. one of the touchy issues within 14. Mm-hmm. I'm happy to pay more than it costs you to develop a lunar whale, but I want that money to stay in 14. Right. And that's not a privilege we have. Exactly. Zone, which is also likely to be populated by these very cultist-like factions they've shown as armor sets over the months. In fact, I'd say it's fairly safe to assume that most, if not all, the assets they've shown in-game related to these cosmetic packs are actually the very assets that will be used in Alpha 2, and it actually highlights some super interesting facts about Alpha 2 that I only recently uncovered. But I won't spoil this juicy information in today's video, that's far better suited to milk for a another day's worth of copium soaked ad revenue. The point is, it's pretty obvious what parts of the map they're going to use for Alpha 2. You just take the cosmetic assets that they've shown over the last few months and then cross-reference it with the environment concept. As it stands, Ashes of Creation is the only successful publicly funded MMO project. Some would argue there is, of course, Star Citizen and Pantheon Rise of the Fallen and... I I would define successful once it's launched, not the fact that they got funding and they're showing off these things. I don't know about you, but that's just... Yeah, I, I think that phrase on its own would get much closer to like what Earth 2 is doing. Um, and that's not that's not something that I would... I would Of the spectrum of things, I wouldn't want to see Ashes go more towards Earth 2 mm-hmm. and less towards a Realm Reborn. It's the current hope of the public funding, but if you go look at MMORPGs, Wildstar was the last successful launch of one prior to new world everything else has been crowdfunded and just and it has not been able to be sustainable uh, within community supported i would say e- eve online has had a pretty sincere relationship with their community not all their community likes what they do but it is very <laughs> devoutly it is devoted um i would say warframe is probably one of the mm-hmm. examples of, a, of one that really does a good job from my perspective um being in step with its community as far as you give us resources we give you content and that goes around and around as a loop yeah i don't know how they got their start i don't know that origin story so maybe that statement doesn't appeal to apply to them but like you said if we're basing success on having already released i would say their continued development has done a very good job of being in line um with being an mmo version of something like elite dangerous I would have to refute that by saying Star Citizen isn't even an MMO and Pantheon Rise of the Fallen is, uh, yeah. Still in development, just like Ashes. Anyway, it's safe to say that (laughs) Ashes is pretty much our last remaining hope for a genuine, good quality MMO that's trying to appeal to a large enough audience to compete with the likes of Elder Scrolls Online, Guild Wars 2, and Black desert online for that third fourth and fifth place spot now i very carefully didn't mention final fantasy 14 and wow there because i'm not entirely convinced ashes of creation's open world pvp will actually appeal to the masses of brain dead morons who want a single player game masquerading as an mmo so i think it's far more likely to assume ashes will fall within the same number of players as the three currently popular mmos that just fall short Who's playing WoW alone? 
of appealing to a mainstream audience. <laughs> and how'd that go? <laughs> Not good. Successful, but, but niche. His point, it, though, is that Ash is where I think when I see a lot of the, like, if I see Final Fantasy fourteen players and uh, World of Warcraft players, like, hyping up Ashes, it's a completely different model. Sandbox, open world PvP, um, kind of building out the world, player driven goals and things of that nature to where like essentially like they're going to step in and it's going to feel like a foreign world. Where's the content? Oh, you're the content. You know, the content's the, what the players drive. And so like I just as much as I love the sandbox, like I just think that when it, when you look at the numbers, there's a reason why WoW is so successful. There's a reason why Final Fantasy 14 is so successful. And it's especially 14 now with the duty support system and the modes that they're introducing, opening it up so that you can play whatever way you want. And we talked about this like on the podcast, like the one thing 14 needs to do is have a hybrid system so that it's not just single player or multiplayer that it, you could have me and my friend are playing this together and not having to worry about inviting in the outside world uh, into that experience. Uh, and so like, yeah, I, I, that's where I see, like, I, I like that line. Cause I was like really kind of curious as to, as to overall your thoughts, because like, as somebody like as a wow player and a 14 player, um, like, I don't know if this is going to be a, like a game that appeals to what you think and what you enjoy in an MMO. I, I, I think that MMOs are large enough, especially 14 and wow to appeal to people all the way from, this is the only game they play mm -hmm. to people that play alongside other games. There are 14 players that pair it with destiny. Yeah. There are 14 players that pair it with guild wars. There are 14 players that pair it and want to pair it with Final Fantasy 16. Yeah. So to say, well, they play Final Fantasy 14, therefore are always brain dead morons, and not <laughs> sometimes I want to be a brain dead moron, and sometimes I want to play something else. Yeah. I, I've heard Final Fantasy 14 players are allowed to download Factorio. So, like, I maybe they're not, maybe I misunderstood, but I believe if you check my hard drive, there are other games here. Yeah. And so, like, even if you say, hey, this is going to be different than 14. That's a great warning. Like, is this a good game for 14 players? Well, let's look at the variety of reasons that people like 14 yeah. and see which of those might fit with Ashes and which of those might not. Because there might be somebody who, I like these five things about Final Fantasy 14, and Ashes has none of those things. Right. And you're right. That's They're going to try it on day one. They're going to go, oh, this isn't for me. And they're going to leave. Dead game. But there's another set of things that make up Final Fantasy XIV. I like investing in my character. I like mm -hmm. exploring a big, beautiful world. I love unlocking cosmetics. I like microtransactions. And I have great news. Those games are both going to have all of those things if that's what drives you to be a gamer. Yeah. it's. I look at this as, uh, like, when you talk about tribalism, like, it's so interesting, especially within the MMORPG genre. Uh, there's so much, like rooting against like the other games in that regards and so like a statement like while not in, i don't think intentionally like rooting against them but that exclusionary mindset ends up being like all right like i'm at, you know like categorizing it like within the mmos yeah like those are like mmos is a big term now it is and there's multiple ways that games kind of adopt that even non-mmos have mmo type elements to them we've seen that with games and service games right heavily but in this regards, it's like, I always kind of, like, I, we see it also like, yeah, like, oh, I don't like it. We saw, I saw it when I was talking about Guild Wars 2 the other day. Oh, I hate Guild Wars, blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, but I love this other game. And so it's, there's this gaming mindset of like, I, and probably it's beyond MMOs. I, I, I might be just within my own kind of echo chamber here, but it's like, I'm going to attack that game and my game is perfect. Unless I'm mad at my game. You know, it's like there's right, this weird, right, you know. Right. When 14 fans are saying, wow, is a dead game because they have bad headlines, but then you go out to Twitch or YouTube and, and on massive. average, yeah. the community is showing up to talk about and discuss and engage with anything on the video at a rate of like 10x. It's not like, oh, well, 14 fans just don't like YouTube. It's 10x. Like, it, it, it's, wow is a huge community. So, yeah. like, the dead game tends to be just this way of dismissing another game. Yeah is how I would describe them, and I think that's a pretty accurate description for our highly anticipated MMO as well. But we'll come back to post-launch monetization in the final segment. Ashes of Creation is planning to be a mandatory subscription fee game with no box cost, but they're also opting in to go for a cosmetic store post-release, and Stephen is adamant that their cosmetics sold in the store will most definitely not overshadow the in-game earnable ones, but in the history of MMOs, that's never been the case, and I only go off facts and evidence. Unless the facts and evidence in question contradict my own opinion, then 
we just ignore it. And it oh, good, because I wouldn't want to think about the fact that people want ultimate cosmetics in 14 or want, like, the gladiator mounts in, in WoW. Because, yeah, 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 no, but that doesn't mean his point, so dismiss those. Additional <laughs> note to their cosmetic right. stores, Steven has also stated that Ashes of Creation will never turn pay to win. However, there is no denying that the FOMO cosmetic packs are a major deterrent and a major source of skepticism for this ambitious MMO. Everything they claim sounds almost like they have a solution for everything wrong with the genre in the current year, and it does seem a lot like buzzwords and promises to appeal specifically to, well, everyone. This skepticism is amplified further when we're closing in on nearly a year since our playable Alpha 1 phase, which was met by mixed reviews, mostly from people out of the loop of Ashes of Creation, and not really understanding what the Alpha 1 actually was supposed to be. Yeah, most gamers don't understand what like alpha and beta is and that's why typically they're kept real close to the chest so that people who understand them can understand that you're there to give feedback and to test systems and that way they can find these issues and errors as opposed to like oh i i played the alpha it was it didn't have the content like it's not the game like the game it's a part of it and we're and they're working on their way stepping through it and that's that's kind of like when they opened it up and it was like people are streaming it and i'm like yeah people are like this is doesn't look good it's got years of, it's years away people <laughs> right so my counter to that okay would be that the gaming industry as a whole has made the choice to not teach that as we need to get together and agree on what these terms mean and agree on how they're going to be communicated true. to educate That's the true. public yeah and instead for all i know fortnite's still in beta so like when <laughs> they go yeah. out and perpetuate yeah. that a full featured game can be a beta and that a partially featured game can be a full release they are part of that there yeah. is no enforcement mechanism to tell us what a game is and what a game is not so let's discuss ashes of creation's monetization post-launch if we are to assume the game falls under the same range of players as elder scrolls online guild wars 2 and black desert online then we need to take a look at how these games are monetized to stay afloat in the current year guild wars 2 is a buy to play game with paid expansions and an in-game cosmetic store that also sells convenience items such as experience boosts and bag slot upgrades but guild wars 2 is a unique one in this equation as the game is run by one of the only passionate development teams left that isn't Hired by their corporate publisher. So let's move on to Elder Scrolls Online next, a game that is also buy to play with an in-game cash shop and similar convenience items to Guild Wars 2. It also follows a similar but not quite as loose horizontal progression path, so I'd argue that this game isn't pay to win either, until you factor in their optional subscription fee, which a lot of players argue is actually mandatory to play this game properly. I wish the game would just get rid of the deceptive free to play hook and just man the fuck up and say the subscription is mandatory. Sadly, this will never happen as corporate publishers would rather deceive unsuspecting consumers than actually have any kind of integrity these days. I think how you market your monetization is that you don't want to be held accountable for mistakes you didn't make. Yeah. If somebody else used a term and then they abused a community, mm -hmm. you don't want to be lumped in with them for choosing their term. And not all terms are the same. Guild Wars has a base game that allows you to get to the max level for free. The max level in expansions is lateral, and you cannot do that gold to gem conversion until you have bought at least one of the expansions. But any feature added to an expansion, such as the mounts, the gliders, etc., is locked behind purchasing that said expansion. The expansions regularly go on sale or are bundled. Mm -hmm. And then in addition to that, they have an ongoing patch update type schedule called Living Seasons that expands on the story and the narrative and the, and the gameplay elements of the world. And those are given out free to the current population. And anybody who comes in later, those are sold to at a very small amount, but then they are also regularly given away or discounted. That's how they charge for their game. Mm -hmm. So, are those microtransactions? Eh. Are those full-featured expansions? Nah. Eh. Like, all the terms don't really apply because everything I just described is drastically different than, say, for example, Final Fantasy, mm -hmm. which says you can play our base game and its initial expansion as much as you want, but you will not have access to the ability to join the rest of the player population because you cannot reach max level. Right. You're going to be inherently limited in a huge number of ways. It's a huge number of hours, 
but those huge number of hours are not representative of where the end game community is today. And so right. you played a lot of time, but you didn't get a good taste of what Endwalker is. World of Warcraft gives you a much smaller shortage, but the gameplay loop within the fact that it's simplified to somebody that's never played it is much closer to how the classes play at the end game than Final Fantasies. So maybe that's better, even though it's less time. So should these all be lumped under the term trial? Should these all be lumped under the term what cost is, what pay to win is? And so to say that you don't want to be mired down in their terms, I totally understand. I agree that letting somebody play however much time you think mm -hmm. they need to play to get a taste for your community, yeah. whether that be a 20-minute trial or play indefinitely up to a certain level, I think that everybody should have to cross a paywall to have access to the premier community experience for a huge number of reasons. But what that looks like is going to be different for every single game because every single game paces the types of content and how often it's released and how heavily you can get involved in it very differently. Guild yeah. Wars doesn't update their stuff as often as WoW. WoW has an indeterminate patch schedule. Final Fantasy releases a patch every four months on the nose. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take this slightly in a different direction because, like, I continue to see this uh, among gamers, and I think it's a weird, like, in, in a way, like, red herring. Like, it's, it's like, everybody's kind of focusing in on that. While I think the subscription model is the most fair, uh, I think it's delusional to think that every MMO out there can come out and have a subscription model and maintain this the level of success that it has. And I think essentially what you actually see now is something generational in which that MMOs aren't coming out and finding and, and and then essentially not being rooted for or not getting the support that they need or the funding they need. People continue to be like, oh, but games like they don't really cost as much as these publishers say they do. Like you miss the whole point. It's not just that, but it's like if I can go and make a billion dollars over there with less effort and less uh, fighting, I'm not putting that money over here. And so you're uh, like right now the the mod like being upset over like ESO's monetization or, or Guild Wars 2 monetization uh, as you're kind of, you know, like, oh, okay, yeah, like there. And then at the same time, like not supporting like other games, like the genre itself is actually at risk of collapse where you're not seeing new games being made. You're not seeing new monetization methods tried. Right. You're not seeing a, a player base that's active in it. And so then you also don't see new people coming into it, young people coming into it. Yeah. And so literally you're just looking at a genre that's aging itself out because it's unwilling to sit here and have the hard conversation about what is it? What is it about monetization? I think the ones that are going to survive are the ones that are actually going to be seasonally based where they have like maybe with ESO where that expansion drops every year. It mm -hmm. has that hype cycle. It has that content. And it says, hey, you can still keep playing in our sandbox and our world. All right, we'll see you next year for the next expansion and we'll, we'll sell that to you. And that ends up kind of being where, you know, like it's got to have some level of sustainability. But like, literally, I think people like, you know, especially with Ashes, setting it up to fail and then essentially like kind of being on that cycle what you're doing is you're chasing out people who are willing to say like that's the game i want to make because people want to make it's great these kind of games but then it's like oh wait a minute like right. I, I i can't put that it becomes so risky that it becomes inherent like to the, the businesses yeah like right. maybe maybe i could make it sustainable but why would i when i have when i'm not when i didn't make an mmo 20 years ago if i wanted to make an mmo it had to be 20 years old or you know or 10 years old or something like that because otherwise you're just gonna like the the industry is just gonna like dunk on it and that means it's not it's not having to survive for a couple years it's like if you start making it to where like in order to have a, a new mmo you have to have it to where it survives for like five ten years on its own before the community is like yeah it's worth it <laughs> yeah i mean you've recently gotten into stand-up and yeah. if and if you decided the first time you wanted to go to get into stand-up if you showed up and the clubs were struggling, so they had to charge you because that's where their business model was. Yeah. And then you watched 10 comics get up, and every single one of them had tomatoes thrown at them, got booed off the stage. You're not going to go take a... Like, why would you pay money to go have that happen to you? And, so, right. and then you have an audience who's like, I just love comedy. I go to the comedy <laughs> club every week. To throw I mean, I hate the bad comedians, but there's like we've labeled so many comedians as bad especially comedians that are it's their first time on the stage yeah that we're no longer getting new comedians and so now all of your comedians are 55 or older <laughs> they're gonna retire they're all people who've been working nights yeah in in crappy venues sleeping in crappy beds so like they're not all gonna live to be 120 like yeah. comedians as an industry is not 
the healthiest of all professions. And so, like, now you've got these aging comedians that have lived hard lives in, in the name of the art that they care for and are passionate about. Yeah. And you've guaranteed that nobody younger than them can get in. That's where MMOs are, is we have gotten so good at pushing them out. So, like, I want Ashes to do well. My yeah. issues with it are not... Like, I can feel that I want it to do well and have issues with some of the choices they've made, mm. even if I don't play it. So sometimes, yeah. like, like, like I tried Lost Ark, and then because I'm already involved with other MMOs, plural, people are like, oh, you're not playing Lost Ark anymore. Well, yeah, I just don't have time. But, it, like, I enjoyed my time in it. Mm -hmm. I am glad to see it doing well. I watch videos on other people playing it. It's the same with New World. Yeah. You're super into New World. I ask you about it regularly. Mm -hmm. I'm not level 60, you know? I, I hop in from time to time, but... I, I don't have time. Right. But, like, it doesn't mean I don't want to see it succeed. It doesn't mean I wouldn't read about an upcoming expansion. Right. It doesn't mean I wouldn't root for that. I think that's why, like, that's why I say the seasonal model is, like, for the chagrin of many people who are just frustrated with it, is what is displaying itself as the most sustainable model. Because then it's like, yep, here's your content cycle. Here's your, you go and you play it, and that was fun. And then you go play something else for a little bit, and then you maybe you, and then you come back as a part of the cycle. So maybe the gamer isn't into one game 100% of the time. And that's that's the Final Fantasy XIV model. And Yoshi P's like, no, take a break. Like, yeah, we're, we're going to keep doing this stuff. And then so you end up seeing somebody jump in and then jump out. Jump in and jump out. Destiny is also the same way. A lot of these games have that where it's like, yeah, this is the time where a lot of people play and this is the time where not as many people play. And, you know, it kind of ebbs and flows. And maybe you as a gamer, you, you, you pick one or two or three and you just kind of like, all right, I'm going to play Guild Wars 2 for the next two months. Oh, that, that's, that, I really enjoyed that. Okay, now I'm going to go and play this for a little bit, you know. And you end up having kind of a little, a little bit of variety, which I think is important. Too much variety ends up just kind of like, you're just like, oh, I can't. I, I can't keep did, up. I never achieved anything. Yeah, I never achieved anything, but it's like a little variety is good for everybody. Which leaves us, finally, with the worst of the bunch, Black Desert Online, a game that is buy-to-play and also features not one, not two, but three optional subscription fees, two of which I would argue are mandatory, and on top of that, a whole in-game store mired with pay-to-win garbage. I've got over 10,000 hours in this MMO, and I'm quite proud of how competitive I made my purely free-to-play account. I know what this game is about, and it is pay-to-win at the end of the day. FOMO is obviously an insidious practice that preys off the weak-minded with a false sense of urgency, but FOMO only really becomes predatory when it uses a false sense of urgency to convince people that they need to buy it now, now, now. This is usually done by giving items a limited time discount and then saying it will be gone. Elder Scrolls Online, Guild Wars 2, and Black Desert Online do this a lot just to rotate these items back in a couple of months with an even higher discount, screwing over people who paid that previous price under the false sense of urgency. Stephen has explicitly stated that they will never be selling limited cosmetic. Do you think somebody is screwed over if somebody else gets to buy the same good or service at a later date at a different price? No. Okay. It I, takes. Yeah, I think that it's a weird sense of like trying, like, people got to have personal responsibility, right? Like you got to sit here and say, listen, you, you, you blew your money. Are you, are you a child or are you mentally impaired? And if the answer is no to those questions, shut up. Stop. Com like like you shook hands and agreed this price for that good or service. And yeah. as long as that was delivered, mm -hmm. that was a complete transaction. Now, if they choose to go complete a separate transaction at a later date at a higher or lower price, mm -hmm. that is a separate handshake with a separate person at a separate right. time. And if you were like saying like, hey, this is the only thing I'm offering and this is the only thing, et cetera, and I'm not going to do it again. And I'm like, all right, well, this is like, like I could buy a PS3 today for. Right. But like if you go and you, cha you change that, like in my mind. I've dealt with enough salespeople and sales pitches that I'm like, all right, like I can't, I'm not having a contract that says that like, this is the lowest you'll ever, like you're only selling me the item. You're not selling me any other rights in that regards. You're just, you're just the salesman in that regards. And like, that's what this, no one you're being sold to. Like you, that, that's all I can say. I'd have, I'd have a bigger say. issue if they were saying, we followed Brian's pricing habits in the past, and we're going to offer him 67% off this mount. And then mm -hmm. I open up my launcher, and it's only 15% off because they think they can get me for more. <laughs> yeah. As long as it's the universal price, I don't... At that time. Right? right. And, and like, so like airlines, for example, if you refresh pages, there are airlines that sometimes adjust their prices based on how many times a flight's been used. Yeah. Uh, like or how many how many times it's been viewed and so like there's an advantage to viewing certain transactions in an incognito browser 
because they are using that to inform a transaction that has not yet had that handshake. It's mm -hmm. not, oh, a flight in July is a different price than a flight in August, even though it's the same destination from the same departure right. point. Mm -hmm. It's it's a moving target because they're trying to extract out that the money. most possible. That feels a lot more dishonest than the best price I can offer on this mount today is fifteen dollars. It's not going to be available for a while. You know what? Or yeah, best we're, price now we're is ten dollars. We're not going to sell it again. in the and future. Later, it's like, well, people really wanted that, and so we're just listening to what the people are wanting, and we're bringing it back. And it's like, I don't think you're not. There's no contractual exclusivity that you're actually having with that transaction. If they did, then there'd be a breach of contract. But they oh yeah, if there was like a founders pack, right? And this it's is like, something we're only doing. For and founders. like literally as a part of this, like we are locking, and so it, it's contractual, but these things like he him saying that it's just like a salesperson saying like i, I you know this this deal's gonna be gone like to, i got another buyer on this house like all right you know maybe he does maybe he doesn't he's a salesperson <laughs> you know I, like i'm not a salesperson you've been in sales and it's like i don't know like i i, I can usually i feel like generally detect what i'm being sold to and then essentially i never found that that outright lying in sales was oh, ever, ever, well, not only necessary, not but to my advantage. Right. Well, you're not lying in, in that regard. It's like, you would be like, yeah, we're not going to sell this again. And then it's like two years later, after like countless fan things, like, right. hey, the 99% of y'all are asking that we want to bring this mount back. And we're just doing what you told us to do. Like, you can have the best intentions, but things can change. Because there is also no contract that says you can't bring that item back. I don't know that I would. Okay. It's yeah, like that, that's why cash shops suck. I mean, like at the end of the day, like ah, uh, that's but that's what that's why I, I can go buy a PS3 and PS3 games right now, super cheap. Yeah, does that devalue the people who bought PS3 games at the time? No, because the advantage is they got to play it then. Right now, I got to deal with the fact that I walk outside. I'm like, who's excited? I just beat my first infamous game, and people are like, what are you talking, what are you talking about? about? So I, different, different time, different transaction and then bringing them back later at a discounted price. This to me is probably the most ethical way that you can use a FOMO monetization method. But I also recognize that I, as a consumer, have no idea what's required to actually fund an MMO. Uh, none of us do. There's a reason why it's not public knowledge. But Intrepid are the only development team to get a publicly funded MMO this far without the investment of corporate publishers. So, to me, it seems like Steven knows what it takes. It's not out. That's okay, the, that's so, the so it's tied with every Kickstarter that didn't complete. Currently, yeah. Has there Is never it? been an MMO on Kickstarter or any other crowdfunding site that didn't make it to completion? Oh uh, yeah, multiple. Okay. I just want to know what we're comparing it to. Right. Because I think people are calling this a completed game. And I just want to call it what it is. That's the problem. That's that's the thing. It's like, um, like guys, like 2025 at a minimum. At a minimum. I mean, I hope it makes it. But, like, as of now, if we're just looking at objective, Here's as of it has it not, they're the answer is They're also far enough along. They're, they're far enough along. Like, in terms of what we've shown, Unreal sure. 5, that it's like, he can pick up a phone to Microsoft, to Amazon. I doubt Google is interested. Uh, Sony, who's looking to pick up more games and service games. Like, and it, you get to right. a point Sony where it's says like... they want to like triple the number hey. of their, their MMOs or whatever that number was. Whatever that phrase was. They said they wanted to get some number. But the date by which they wanted to get there implied they were going to have to purchase them. They're going to have to purchase them. Um, you know, so it's like, I, I think they've got to a point, at least in proof of concept and running alpha, that it's m monetization isn't... Like, I would not be surprised if here in a year, when the game's still not out, that he's like, hey guys, you know what, we looked at the numbers, we've just, like, Amazon decided, they, they wanted to come in and they wanted to help us get this thing over the finish line, and so we are now going to let Amazon help out with, with the publishing. You know, because, like, I would not be shocked at that, if that happened. But that makes this suddenly seem like they were dishonest, because the community has been making these assumptions. Oh, the community that's Even been doing like, it would, let's say that happened, would be immediately uh, frustrated. But then me as a player, like I'd be like, oh shoot, you means you got deep pockets. That means that no matter what, you'll be able to keep pressing forward. Yeah, because, they didn't buy you to not release an expansion. Right. You know, in that regard. So I like, you know, I would say that like all of a sudden it's like, oh, you got a company with deep pockets behind you. That means you'll be able to weather the, the eventual dip that's going to happen. Right. And then allow you to actually climb out of that death spiral that happens with, Every MMORPG. 
Yeah, I'm hopeful they have a big publisher backing them at some point because I just don't see how they get there. Oh, yeah, maybe they. And, that, and that's that's my one. pessimism. Yeah. So like, I I see the value. I see I see what he's saying about like it's so great they don't have a publisher. I see that. Yeah. But as somebody that like watched Destiny go through a variety of growing pains, there was this point where everybody was like, everything bad about the game is the publisher's fault. But when they separated the publisher, it turns out they were oh. perfectly capable of making their own mistakes. Exactly. So given the choice, there are times that I would rather a game have the pockets of a publisher now does that come with downsides yes, absolutely. absolutely and i could see them choosing between ashes with one set of downsides like with them self-publishing etc and then if they get into trouble then i could also see that kind of having a like hey we're gonna go ahead and that's how wow stuff. joined activision activision yeah was exactly. blizzard blizzard needed the money to weather the, money. the storm mm -hmm. yeah so subscribe to the channel turn off your ad blocker and get high on copium um yeah i i mean i i don't think a game can be sustained on subscription only it won't because i haven't seen base. it happen right I, I would i'm interested in the first company to do it mm -hmm. i haven't seen it happen the way i look at it is that people because like you know obviously we don't have the the all the 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 commas and the and, and the, the dots and, and the the shares but at its core, like the subscription a, mo a monthly price has not gone up since yeah. it was released. And it's that there are costs that have gone up. People want more money. Right. Everything's gone up. And so games have introduced cash shops for additional ways of support. Uh, obviously, they're they're making it. But it's like it's what, why we saw Square Enix purchase this stuff. Like they, you don't want to just make it because you could have one bad year and all of a sudden you're done. As opposed to like you want to have that sustainability. You want to be able to weather the storm. Uh, that all costs money, and and literally just having it based off of a subscription, uh, we're 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 going to see that tested out right now with Mortal Online too, but the numbers on that we we did that in our last reaction video, like they're they're great in terms of that that size and scale, but like people are wanting I guess some wow repeat, and I don't think you're going to see anything like wow ever repeat itself again. In terms of like just those kind of numbers where it continues to go up but i'd love to be there for it to happen it, it may not happen in our genre it has happened right yeah fortnite is that overnight it's success true. for a company that wasn't prepared for it and really didn't invent the genre that they succeeded in yeah and, and was a little blown away at their own support and that's just like so it does happen right minecraft mm -hmm. it was just a guy it was like a five euro alpha that's when i bought in and it was like oh cool i can punch a tree yeah and now it's it's a billion dollar industry so like these things do happen happen mm -hmm. um question is will it happen again within the but will it happen in happen? our space right? right you don't spend a lot of time with minecraft you don't spend right. a lot of time with fortnite and so right. it doesn't appear to happen to us mm -hmm. as as the types of games we consume right but it does happen yeah um and so like there's a first time for everything. Um, I'd love to see a MMORPG succeed on subscription only because I think ethically I'm really pro subscription only. Yeah. Um, but the reason that I've learned to kind of say, okay, well, with those other things, what are the pros and cons of them is that I've had to come to grips with that some of them are going to have to be present. Mm -hmm. And so now it's just about like, well, which one for this game and the way it's being handled is the most pros for the least cons. Yeah. Um, and so my issues with Ashes of Creation are so lightly based because there's so little to base them on. Yeah. Most of my issues are actually with the people that are telling me a bunch of things that it can't be mm -hmm. because it's just like people that I get just as nervous about Final Fantasy 16, us being Final Fantasy 14 creators. That's a much more dangerous subject for me to come out and say, pull, pull back. But I, I am immensely nervous when people see a trailer that's mm -hmm. two minutes long and, like, and oh, tell me it's going to change their life, change save their, life. their marriage, repair their <laughs> car, balance their budget. And I get really nervous about that. Yeah. And with Ashes of Creation, they're like, I have some beautiful cosmetics. Yeah. Therefore, this game will have better end game content than WoW, better narrative uh, world building than Final Fantasy XIV, better lateral progression than Guild Wars 2, a better launch than any MMO ever has, more fair monetization than anything in the industry like okay but like you there's a reason it's not like everybody else is like you know i saw the build a good game button didn't want to push didn't it want to push like that. that's like, too easy you know i just <laughs> i i like a little conflict so like I, yeah. I just get nervous when people are telling me only good things you talk about feeling like you're being sold to yeah when i say okay cool you already sold me on the good what's what's the bad what's and you go bad? well i think my worst quality is that i'm just gonna be too good yeah 
okay, well, the interview's over. I'm not hiring you. Yeah. Like, like. <laughs> I think what I could see how the subscription model for the MMO could work in the future is that it's a part of a bundle thing like PlayStation Now or Xbox Game Pass. Or, Absolutely. Where you're like, I'm part of the subscription ecosystem. Right. And then all of a sudden, yeah, that game is a part of that. You know, so it's like you can either subscribe to that game individually uh, or that if you're part of this like collective, then you have access to it. And then, yes, you'll I don't think, you know, you'll, I'll be interested to see if Mortal Online 2 holds to its monetization setup and model and funding at some point, because it's that, you know, are you able to sustain that? And, and if they have the population that does that, it's going to be great, but it's not going to be massive. But I, I could see how I could see more of these things popping into like because I say. People say, oh, New World needs a subscription. I say they already have it. It's called Amazon you know, Prime. Like, as a part of Prime, they give you various perks in their game. And it's like, yeah. So they, they have that as a part of this overall funding, and they can see the engagement that comes along with it. You know, and so I see it more of that kind of like, it's this umbrella. Same thing I've kind of advocated for 14 and 11. Like, make this an umbrella. Wow, wow, classic. It's an umbrella subscription. It's going to give you. It's trying to give you as much value that you have, and then guess what? But that can't be here because the whole advantage is this isn't part of publishing family. Not yet. So yeah. that doesn't have the advantage of being something in another genre like League of Legends. True. That doesn't have the advantage of a big publisher like Sony or Xbox. Yeah. That doesn't have the advantage of being tied to an existing game like Battle.net or the Final <laughs> Fantasy XIV launcher. Right. So everything you just presented it presented can't be the solution for Ashes because their strength, as presented here was that they don't have an existing set of titles that they're obligated to also support. Exactly. And there are pros to that that I think are very well shown here, but the cons are that they cannot rely on an existing... There's no nostalgia. I didn't grow mm -hmm. up reading Ashes of Creation books, exactly. playing Ashes of Creation games. I'm not already invested in an Ashes of Creation TV show. So, like, yes, they are not obligated to those other things, but they also cannot withdraw mm -hmm. from all those other things. Exactly. I, I, I agree. I, I, I'm, gosh, I really hope that Ashes knocks it out of the park because sure. I think it would be a really great thing for MMO players around the world. I just think that they're within their own hype cycle. They're like already seeing like people just like burning out of the news, of that excitement, you know, and that's obviously will be cured as soon as like it starts actually ramping up its marketing and build up to their like a launch. Like, hey guys, we're going to launch. This is the date. And then it's like you start seeing that build up to that. So the end of the day it's going to be interesting anyway guys uh let us know what you think hopefully you enjoyed uh this reaction as we've been kind of doing these in person it allows us for more discussion uh, based and also also go check out the video if you haven't seen it already again links in the description like favorite subscribe share chris do you have any uh, final thoughts no I, I think if anything my final thoughts are um i am not informed on ashes of creation this is not a creator i was familiar with um and so whatever is said in this video is my raw reaction because we are making sure that one of us has seen the video but the other one has not so enjoy that for what it is and we'll see you next time take care take that very last section